Doctor, I cannot do it anymore. I've been writing front end, but it's been horrible. Can you help me, please? Hmm. Let me check something. Interesting. You know what? I might have just the thing you need. Here, try this. Rub it twice a day into your skin, into your hair, into your front end. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, sorry, I gotta go. Bye. Hi! Welcome to my talk, your front-end needs a database. In this talk, I will go as far as saying that if you are not using a database, you are doing it wrong. Let's dive in. Traditionally, web applications are built like this. You have your front-end, which could be a browser or a mobile application. You have your server and you have your database. What I am proposing in this talk is that we insert an additional database, a front-end database, right here on the front-end. Why? Let's find out. The first argument is super simple, banal even. Databases are just very good at accessing data. They are just designed for it, right? So it's natural to think that they would improve in this direction. It also explains, by the way, why server-side uses databases. They choose to use databases because databases are nice to use. But nice APIs is not the only thing why you should use databases. Databases can perform better, better than what you can do yourself. If you decide not to use database, you will have to use uh, the data structure that your language provides. I'm talking about arrays objects and nested objects, nested arrays, stuff like that. They work fine, but only if you only access your data by ID. Unfortunately, you do have other types of queries. You have binary search, you have range queries, you have joins, and all these will be suboptimal if you implement them yourself. The problem here is that you are probably writing your own application and user application, you are solving business problems, and this is infrastructure. It will be super low priority. Databases, on the other hand, are in business of accessing data. So they should, and they do, spend time implementing uh, the best algorithms possible, using the best data structures to store your data, uh, and to build additional structures like indexes to further improve performance. Using a database is faster than writing data storage layer yourself. Databases are fast. But wait, aren't databases uh, big and scary and complex and hard to set up? Yes, some of them are hard and big and complex and scary, but some of them not. Just by the nature of it, uh, front-end is super limited by resources, by bandwidth, so there is just not enough room for this complexity to grow. All the front-end databases are simple and easy to use. The complexity is never a problem. So your application probably needs some data from the internet, from the server, right? And here are two possibilities. One is to fetch your data yourself and then store it in a database. The second one is to ask your database and ask the database to fetch data for you. If you choose the first pass, you will have to use tools like uh, Fetch API or XML HTTP request. These tools are way too low level. You have to build a layer of infrastructure on top of them. You have to solve problems that are not necessarily a problem of your business application, the problem of infrastructure. I'm talking about consistency, about error recovery, retries, timeouts, exponential backoff, and stuff like that. And we, we get into exactly the same situation as we get with performance. When working on your application, you probably don't have time to work also on the infrastructure. And these are nasty problems, they're really hard to solve, they require a lot of testing, they require a lot of state management. So the solution here that people arrive at is just implement the simplest possible thing and then just pray. They hope that network will be reliable, that responses will arrive in order, that there will be no consistency, uh, mix-ups and stuff like that. 
And it does work. It works 99% of the time. But 1%, when it does work, you have to ask your users to fix it for you, to detect inconsistencies, to reload the page, to restart your application. And this, I think, uh, could be improved. And we, as engineers, should be working on improving this. The second uh, observation is that uh, the problem of fetching data is very tightly intervened with the problem of storing data. The problem with Fetch API is that each request is isolated. It doesn't know anything about the world around it, which requests are in flight, which data you already have, stuff like that. But to fetch data efficiently and consistently, reliably, you have to know what you already have. And you have to keep a lot of metadata, stuff like IDs, like versions, like vector clocks, dirty flags, a lot of that. Fetching cannot work without data storage and an ability to modify and interact on a very deep level with data storage. So they're basically the same problem and the best to be solved in one single system, which would be a database. So you have your database uh, inside your browser and you don't talk to the network directly. You talk to the database and the database talks to the network, right? Now, what happens if network is down? Well, nothing really. You still have your cache data in your front-end database and you still read and write from it, right? So from the point of view of your application, nothing really happened. Basically, you just got um, in a flying mode for free. Your application became local first just by using the right architecture. Isn't it cool? What I'm suggesting here is we don't need a server on a data pass. We can connect two databases directly. The client is smart, smart now and data is stored in database and server it really doesn't do that much. It's dumb, it's just proxy. It's very thin and there is no good reason to keep it there. The benefit of connecting two databases directly is that now they can improve on the protocol, on the communication protocol they use to send you data, right? They can use advanced techniques like uh, snapshot caching or sending deltas and stuff like that. Basically, whatever algorithms they think of, they can just implement it. Uh, so you probably want your application to be reactive, right? I hope in the future every application will be reactive, every pixel on the screen. But the thing with reactivity is that uh, for it to work, each component has to be reactive. Every element of the data delivery chain has to be reactive. And if you remove the server, you only need your database like or two databases to be reactive and nothing more. And this is basically another reason to connect two databases directly. So data management is a complex and hard task. Current tools that people use are way too low level. Tools like Fetch API, like nested maps. This leads to a problem that people have to build infrastructure on top of them and they do a poor job. I think that databases can deliver better performance, they can deliver nicer API, they can get your application to be local first, they can bring you reactivity. They can do that if you place one piece of database on a front end, another one on a server, and let them talk directly to each other. On the screen here are some examples of databases that implement some of the features from this talk. None of them, as far as I know, implement everything. Uh, this is why I am not selling you one particular database today. Instead, I am selling the architecture, the idea. I do think that using a database will ultimately lead to a better user experience and less code. Yes, I do think that if you're writing a front-end, you need a database. Thank you.